Now with Marvel's Phase 4 list of movies and TV shows are out during the San Diego Comic Con, a few questions came up. For instance, who are the Eternals? Welcome to Comic Zooka. My name is Malcolm. Now, The Eternals first appeared in The Eternals number 1, July of 1976, and they were created by none other than Jack Kirby. Now, before we go any further, let's step a bit back. Remember that Jack Kirby left Marvel to work for DC Comics, and it was there where he started to develop the saga known as New Gods. Now, New Gods was cancelled out before they could actually complete a lot of the saga. So, around this time, Jack Kirby returned to Marvel and, taking elements from New Gods, started to work with the Eternals. Now, with the Eternals, like we already mentioned, he started working with the first, the first issue that came out back in July of 1976 and ran all the way to January of 1978, where the series was cancelled by Marvel, leaving a lot of the plot without conclusion. Well, with that said, now the big question is, where did the Eternals came from? Now, it was the Celestials who actually brought these characters to life, um, according to the story. Now, if we follow what the comic book says, it was back about 5 million years ago when the Celestials first came to Earth. And they captured an ape and they experimented on him, giving him that cosmic chemistry that would farther the race to come. With that said, now three powerful new species came about. First of all, we had the Deviants that were structurally unstable. The each new generation of Deviants appeared in new and monstrous ways. Then we got the Humans that was a species that was bred with true balance of structure and disposition. Although he was a destroyer, the human was capable of building for peace. And then we got, we of course got the Eternals, which you already know they're like gods, but as you also know, this video is all about them. So anyways, following the comic book, we can see that they pick different dwellings. The Deviants, they head underground, while the Eternals, they head to the top of the mountains. As for publication history, as we already mentioned, the Eternals will first appear in July of 1976 in their own series, The Eternals. This series will last until January of 1978. Unfortunately, it will leave much of the plot line without resolving. So it was later on with Roy Thomas while working on Thor, he would include The Eternals and that would climax in Thor number 301. It was here that we get to see much of the plot line being resolved. Later on, we will see the Eternals being mentioned in numerous of Marvel comics, which will also mention the Celestials. That would be the way how they would explain how humans would be able to develop superpowers. We could talk about the Celestials in some other time under some other video. The Eternals will return in a 12-issue miniseries that ran from October of 1985 to September of 1986. Now, in this occasion, it was Peter B. Gillis who was writing for this new miniseries, but then the editor-in-chief Jim Shooter was not liking much of the script and removed him and put Walter Simonson in his place to write the last four issues. Then the Eternals will return again back in 2006 with their own miniseries written by Neil Gaiman. Originally consisted in only three issues, an additional issue needed to be added in order to conclude the whole story. Among the members of the Eternals, we have one of the most well-known of them is Icarus. We also have Thena, Zurus, Makari, Ajax. Cersei, Sprite, and so on and so forth. Well, honestly, there are many more characters, but at least we're going to mention these, and we'll probably do a video which we will talk a little bit more about each and every one of them as the movie comes closer for its release into theaters that will be in November of 2020. Now, aside of this, here's a fun note. Did you know that Thanos is it eternal <laughs> that's right so it's most likely when the movie comes around we either hear 
a mention of Thanos, or maybe there there could be like a quick guest star appearance of Thanos. I don't know, something like that. As for powers and abilities, they do get that from the cosmic energy, which of course makes them immortal. They don't uh, fatigue that easily. They are immune to disease and poisons. Also, they could withstand extreme environmental conditions, such as extreme cold and heat. They're able to regenerate from any sorts of damage. They're also able to absorb um, oxygen from water. So this means, of course, they don't drown and of course with all this said they do have superhuman abilities such as superhuman strength flight or levitate others they can read and control minds they can generate um, illusions they can also generate force fields they can transmute objects both shape and composition they can teletransport vast distances and even if they are three or more eternals at a time they can come together and form Unimine. Of course, some of the Eternals have decided to focus their uh, certain abilities in particular in order to be more effective, right, in their fighting, such as Cersei that is able to develop transmutation more effectively than others, or in the case of Makari that is able to have super speed. Well, that's all the time we have today. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please like. And if it's your first time joining us here in Comic Zooka, why not subscribe? And while you're at it, hit that little bell so you can always get notifications when new videos are up. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, here in Comic Zooka, we're saving the day one comic book at a time. See you guys next time.